well, how is it possible that Andy Thor's daughter can be super freaking jacked, but this random chick in this age group who never competed past the semifinals can be jacked? They're so freaking stupid. This is how you destroy a sport. This is the worst thing that they've ever done, ever. Yo, Daniela Hodges, a master's athlete in the women's 50 to 54 division, failed to submit a drug test when notified. Hodges has received a four year sanction starting March 19th of 2023. This, of course, I see on Facebook. For some reason, I see all of this stuff on Facebook. It's got 322 likes, 113 comments. The first one on there is four years plus public shaming. I responded to that saying, CrossFit isn't public shaming, they're just announcing. Jennifer Donaldson says, Andrew Hiller, but why does this count against her if she didn't participate in quarters or semifinals and she took 20th in the open? It doesn't make any sense, does it? I placed 9th in the open in the 50 to 54 female division. I did participate in the quarters and semis, but I didn't make the games. I wouldn't think to check my email for a drug test. And this is the first thing that I needed to do is I had no idea who this person was. Daniela Hodges, 50 to 54. The first thing I did, of course, is I went over to this year's semifinal for the age group online semifinals in this division. And what you're going to see is Kim Purdy's the winner. T. Gebby is in second place and Cheryl Brost is in third place. And then I scrolled a little bit and nowhere to be found is Daniela Hodges. So I had to do the Daniela Hodges CrossFit into Google so that it would bring me over to her CrossFit profile. And you're going to see that she is from Australia. She is a level eight CrossFitter. It says, hard work always pays off. CrossFit is part of my lifestyle and it makes me feel happy and alive. She's a CrossFit. CrossFit coach, a personal trainer, a mother of two, an owner of Shack Fitness. Her Instagram is Daniela Viking. We'll check that out later. But if you scroll down, you're going to get a little bit of confirmation from that comment on that Facebook post from Jennifer Donaldson. She's competed in 2017, 18, 19, 21, 22, and 23. And she had her best showing this year as a 50 to 54 year old woman. And it might be because she is in the beginning of that age bracket. No, it's almost the opposite of what would happen when you were younger. I remember I was on swim team and it was always beneficial to be the oldest in the age group you are in. And it's almost the opposite when you're in the age group categories in CrossFit. The younger you are, of course, you're going to have a competitive advantage. Her rank worldwide is right about the same most years. She didn't do quite as well in 2022. Who knows why? Because as we know this year, the tests year to year are not indicative of your placing at the end of the game. But she's about a 5,000 open athlete. Let's go check out the age group quarterfinal. She competed in 2019 and 2021. She finished 142nd and then 62nd and then there's nothing else. There's nothing here. Nothing else. That doesn't make any sense. Here's an athlete who I've never heard of, who's in an age group, isn't competing this year, didn't compete this year, didn't compete last year, has never finished better than 62nd in an age group quarterfinal, let alone having competed in a semifinal. And then that comment in the Facebook section holds a lot of weight. Jennifer Donaldson says she doesn't compete. Why is she getting tested? Well, I told you we'd go to her Instagram profile and you know that this is my favorite thing to do. She's pretty freaking muscular, isn't she? You just look at her and she's rather lean. She flexes and you're like, oh God damn, there's veins going throughout everything in there. Every single picture, she is shredded. If you scroll down just a little bit, what you're gonna see is that she was a competitive bodybuilder. And she also has a lot of these before and after pictures. So she's got one that's a 10 year transformation. This is from the year 2009 through 2019. 10 years difference right there. And what you're gonna see is that she put on a little bit of muscle and she apparently lost a lot of body fat. And then you start thinking, okay, maybe she was ditching out on a drug test. Here's another picture. She's covering herself up, she's in a mirror, she's got the phone held up and you can see veins through going throughout their, her stomach and dude like I'm lean and I've been lean in the past but veins in the stomach is nuts especially for a woman 65 kilograms versus 75 kilograms and in the post it says this is what it looks like when you're going for a calorie deficit versus what you're going for when you go for performance and then of course there's the pictures that really catch your eye and that's her on the competitive bodybuilding stage she's got a pretty decent amount of muscle but she is incredibly lean i haven't gone through and read every bit of every single one of these posts where she's talking about bodybuilding but if you ask me why you can see every Every cut and striation on her body and her delts are super pumped up and people go, look at the delts, the delts are a dead giveaway. I don't know, man. 
to me it just looks like a woman who lost every bit of body fat possible. And sure, there's the potential that maybe she would have used a clenbuterol or something to achieve that huge amount of weight loss. That's the drug that Ellie Gabor popped for in 2018, I believe, when she was on CrossFit Mayhem's team. It basically makes you shake and you're gonna lose a couple extra calories from all the shaking that you do, the increased heart rate. And of course, it's got a little bit of a bronchial dilator, which makes it a tad easier to breathe. So it's performance enhancing in that way as well. But I don't recommend you take that one because you might have a heart attack and die. But that said, this doesn't look performance enhancing to me. It almost looks as if the decisions made were ones in which an eating disorder was kind of at the base of it. She's so freaking lean. This isn't me saying she had an eating disorder, by the way. This is me saying that if you were to imagine those people who need medical attention, they tend to have these sort of features. The sucked in cheeks, you can see bones in spots where they're not supposed to be, but she does have a pretty decent amount of muscle definition. And this is my new thing. I like to reach out to these people to see what it is that they have to say. So I wandered on over to that Instagram profile. I clicked on the message button. I go, hey, Daniela, I'm just seeing what happened with the missed drug test. And I was curious if you would want to chat about what went on. And she said, yeah, sure you can. I'm like, oh, cool, let's go. I asked why she missed the test. And then she said that she was away with her family and that the relationship there had been a bit neglected and that she wanted to keep her phone away out of respect until Monday. Basically saying that over the course of a weekend, she had received an email from CrossFit saying that she was one of the people who was randomly drug tested. And I believe that she got 24 to 48 hours in which you got to show up for this drug test. And if you don't show up or if you don't respond, or I guess even if you do respond and don't show up because you're supposed to be where you say you're going to be and you're not there, then you get a four year ban, right? Just like that. I wanted to know why you. Hello there. Who are you? You've never made the games. You've never moved on past the quarterfinals. Purely based off of those stats, it doesn't make much sense from my perspective that they would be coming after you. Based on your vibe. She says, I know, right? It's so randomly strange. She said that she was never on drugs. Everyone who knows me would tell you 100% regardless of whether or not they like me or not. How disciplined I am with my training. I train hard to be at this level. You like a little attention. Okay. I bite. She thinks that she looks like a jacked woman because she does. She says she trains three hours a day and that she eats 100% clean. And this is one of those, change the record. Yeah, we've heard that one before. I inform her that I'm a YouTuber. I want to use this stuff on my channel. Are you cool with it? She follows it up with, seriously, I am not an effing cheater. I can take a drug test right now if you ask me. This thing will totally discredit all of the hard work I put in. It's destroying my life. I love CrossFit. I work as a coach and I don't know how to handle being discredited for something that I didn't do. I let her know that I believed her right there. I actually do believe that this individual is natural. And let me tell you why. She's had kids. I've listened to, watched every single one of the Derek Moore Plates More Dates videos. And if you follow along in the CrossFit space, you'll know that if an individual that had a baby came back and was almost better than ever, that's Andy Thor's daughter. The connection, the parallel between the More Plates More Dates video and what I think to be Annie Thor's daughter's performance in the 2021 season, followed up by that rogue performance, followed up by going on a team and doing incredibly well. And then this year, she'll probably totally dominate is there is a downstream mechanism that when you are in the process of giving birth to a child, there's a byproduct of a steroid called nandrolone. Somewhere, somehow, some way, I don't remember. That's his shtick. I just know that there is a study somewhere out there that shows that the elevated levels of nandrolone occur during the third trimester of having that child, and it might just be some sort of a recovery mechanism for the woman. That's, by the way, the exact same anabolic substance that Phil Toon was caught using. It's nandrolone. Of course, it's not going to show up in your bloodstream and it's going to pop you for a drug test as a woman because it's supposed to be there. It's naturally occurring. It's not synthetic. It's also the thing that I believe Lefteris Theophanitis was popped for using. It's got something like a 12-month clearance window, so you shouldn't use that drug. Andrew, you shouldn't use any drug. Dude, what does mine say? Lots of people are using drugs, all right? <laughs> Sweet. But why? Oh, why do they test out this person? This person, who I'm speculating, had some sort of extreme calorie deficit to the point where the leanness that you're gonna see in the muscle, it's almost because she's so lean. If I, right now, lost every bit of body fat on my body, I would appear 10 pounds heavier, right? I mean, I'm pretty lean as is, but there's body fat. I hold body fat back here. See how the skin is thicker here than it is out here? The skin up here is really, really thin. It's not too small. 
Western. It's been thinner. And this dude right here is using anabolic steroids, testosterone. I kept on asking her, I go, why do they want you? Why do they want you? Do you think somebody dimed you out? Did they call that random number where you can say, why is it that Gras Garcia over in wherever the hell Spain is getting away with whatever the hell him and David Usabada are doing? But this woman, Danielle Hodges, who's never competed past the quarterfinals, is wasting CrossFit's very, very, very little amount of money that they have left. Remember, they can't bring on more people. They're firing their entire media team. They're firing every Everybody, 20% of the workforce, we can't afford you, we don't need you, we're getting ready for the time ahead. But we are going to test this nobody in Australia. She literally says right here, I am a nobody, right there. She also continuously says that if she could afford the drug test, she would take it. She just wasn't home when they came to test her. And why on God's green earth would you expect to be tested? It'd, like, it'd be like if they, you know, I really wish CrossFit would test me because I'm 95% sure that I, right now, would pass that drug test. Andrew, you're on steroids. Uh-huh. And I'm still sure that I would pass that drug test. Wouldn't that be neat? Andrew, why? Well, I made a video on it. Go watch it. It involves testosterone and the level of testosterone that you take. I'm not taking that much because it's TRT and I'll still pass the drug test. Uh-huh. On steroids, will pass the drug test. That said, she's even looked into it. It's 800 bucks over there. Does anyone remember the last time this happened, by the way? And individual that I collaborated with yesterday on an Instagram post. Yeah, that was weird, right? I was in California. I stopped in his affiliate. I didn't see him there, but it's Ryan Fisher. The story goes something, what was it, 2014 or 2015? He was competing at a competition just down the street. Drug tester comes to his house to test him, and that situation was very different. Ryan Fisher was on the fast track to go to the CrossFit Games. You could see he was jacked as all hell, but a lot of that appearance could have been because he's 5'4", 5'5", whatever. It doesn't matter! But the Lance Armstrong method was don't show up if you're not gonna test positive. And in USADA, in WADA, that was an easy way to avoid testing positive. If you don't test at all, then you can't test positive. In CrossFit, they send somebody to you. If you don't pick up the phone, then you're positive. You're out for four years, whichever one that means. And then I go back to that Facebook post where it said something about public shaming. And in a way, I'm kind of messed up here because it, it kind of is public shaming. Yeah, they're announcing it, but they either announced the top six individuals at the CrossFit Games from the previous year testing negative, meaning that they didn't take anything, or they announced somebody like Joey Kosey, who you've never heard of, testing positive. Or they're announcing this chick, Daniela Hodgins, testing positives, who you've never heard of. And she didn't even show up to her test, because why in the hell a uh, random person from random affiliate who hasn't competed at the semifinals, or the quarterfinals, or the whatever for the past couple of years. You gotta make sure that you're in town at this point in time. Last I checked, and I actually probably should have asked Daniela this question. Maybe I will and I'll plug it in here right now. They need to know your whereabouts in order to reach out to you to ask. That's at least what I'm informed of from having heard Frazier talk about it, Froning talk about it, a couple of the women talk about it in the CrossFit ecosystem. Echo bike ecosystem. Eco bike. Was she on a list? Did she give the whereabouts of where she would be to CrossFit? And if they didn't get those whereabouts from her, how could they then ask her? Because it's kind of weird. They can't just assume that I'm going to be here to test me. What if I was in California like I was last weekend? What if I'm in Florida like I'm going to be next weekend? It doesn't make any sense. I gotta ask her. This is important. I'm gonna do it right now. Do they... All right, she's seen them. This is intense. We're waiting. She's typing. I really hope that she says no, they never asked. That would just be the icing on the cake. There it is. That's so strange because it says in the rules you should be informed if you are in the testing pool. I never got informed. I was in the testing pool. I asked them about this and they say you sign up for the open, you agree to the drug policy. But does this mean that all 30,000-ish athletes that sign up for the open shall inform CrossFit every time they travel or get a four-year ban? Boom! We just freaking roasted you, CrossFit! If she's telling the truth, which I don't think that she has any reason not to be telling the truth, this should get you off. This should get you off 100%. This is BS, but it's the whole word because I only don't swear on camera. I swear plenty in real life. This is big. Let's go to the rule book. Section five, registered athlete testing pool for out of competition drug testing. CrossFit will provide email information to the athletes when they have been selected for the registered athlete testing pool and furnish the athletes with a contact information from at that time. A method for updating this form on a continuous basis will also be provided. All contact information collected for the purpose of 
administering drug test will be kept strictly confidential. Athletes included in the testing pool must submit complete and accurate contact and whereabouts information quarterly, December 31st, March 31st, June 30th, and September 30th. Any athlete who fails to provide and or update their contact or whereabouts information or provides incorrect or false information resulting in the inability for the collection agent to contact the athlete or administer the drug test within an acceptable amount of time may be charged with violating the drug test policy and subject to sanctions. But that is, of course, if they asked for it or if they were giving the athletes the, as stated right above here somewhere, where is it? CrossFit LLC will provide email notifications when they have been selected for the registered athlete testing pool, which this athlete, Daniela Hodgins, never did. So how in the hell, how, how, how? Wow, hello there. Can she test positive if she never showed up for something that she didn't even know she had to be in a certain location to be at, eh? <laughs> this is the, this is, <laughs> this is more than I bargained for. I'm going to burn this MF down. This is from Daniela right here. She said that she wrote this in her appeal, but they dismissed it. Also, it was an out of competition test. Does that mean everyone doing the open can be drug tested? Absolutely, that's not what that means. This is the best video of all time. Daniela Hodges, 100%, even if by the legal system, however the hell that works, if you obtain evidence, I analyze it with science evidence and you didn't go about it the right way then you can't use it in court right that's why police officers have to get search warrants to go through houses to get stuff they can't just break into your house and grab some stuff and say oh look we found some drugs as far as the way i know it's supposed to work so if daniela right here didn't have the order of operations followed to be deemed unable to give that test then she can't give it and she should be clear on top of that i also think that she's just incredibly lean please share your opinions in the comments section if anybody has has any contact with anybody over at CrossFit, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. You can't just do this to people. Hey, um, just so you know, anybody, anybody who signs up for the CrossFit Open, you're not gonna be able to compete in the ensuing years because at any given point in time, CrossFit can show up at your backyard. And if you're not there within 12 hours, you're SOL. You're not, you're gonna get a four year ban. You love CrossFit, you've got 13 affiliates, you've paid your four to $10,000 on all of your levels and your certifications and your CrossFit football, power athlete. You're gonna go and do some endurance running with Chris Hinshaw, we don't care. It doesn't matter! If you didn't show up in your backyard where you said that you lived without us even asking if you were gonna be there at that point in time, it doesn't matter if you were 56,492nd in the open, we're going to ban you because we think that you're using drugs. Because maybe somebody sent us a picture of you being a bodybuilder at some point in time. We don't have the brains to say, well, how is it possible that Annie Thor's daughter can be super freaking jacked? But this random chick in this age group who never competed past the semifinals can be jacked. They're so freaking stupid. This is how you destroy a sport. This is the worst thing that they've ever done Ever. Last thing from Daniela before we leave. Thank you, they totally ruined my reputation and they don't even follow their own policies. And they don't. This is the biggest thing that's ever happened in the freaking CrossFit space ever. I hope it doesn't get brushed under the rug and I hope it's not lost at the end of this long video. I know, I'll put this at the beginning of the video so that you see it. That's all, Andrew Hiller, out. Please smash that like button, no one touches